I wanted you to be on the show today because I love your workout classes. You have built an amazing community with working out and inspired a lot of people to care about their bodies and care about their fitness and make it a practice, not just something you do once in a while. And not something that you just do by yourself, but something that you do with your community. And I just love that about you. And I think it's really inspiring. So I looked at you one day when we were working out and I was like, gosh, it really takes a lot of confidence to stand in front of a group of people in your workout clothes and like lead a class while you're working out. And I just was wondering like, what brought Sky to this confidence? Like, was she always like this? Or would she have some story that brought this upon her? So that's why you're here on the show today. I would love to hear your story and I would love to hear what you do and who you are and how you got to be here. <laughs> all right. Um, well, first of all, let's just start off with I'm Sky Spirit and I am a certified personal fitness trainer and group fitness instructor. I have been living in Hawaii for about five years now. Um, I started off just growing up in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, if you guys don't know where that is, it's out in the Blue Ridge Mountains, way on the East Coast. Absolutely beautiful place. It's a crazy town, hippie town. Tons of music and shows and hiking and lots of act outdoor activities. So all my life, I've always been active. My mom always wanted to go on hikes and I was always playing sports in high school. Soccer, field hockey, swim team. I was in it, like loved being active. So that was always a big part of my life. And then let's just say that things started to go really downhill. I completely lost myself um, to drugs. I definitely abused drugs a lot. And I don't regret it at all. It was an experience and it showed me that I don't want to be that person anymore. Mm -hmm. But I needed to get out of Asheville. I was like, I can't stay here. This is toxic for me. I need to find who I am. So I left Asheville. I took off across the States, actually. I drove from North Carolina all the way to California with my boyfriend at the time. We got to California. I trimmed a bunch of weed, <laughs> herb, <laughs> medical marijuana. Um, is that okay? Do we yes. That? No. It's okay. That's how you made your money. Um, it's, a, it's a plan yeah, that makes so money. Yeah, so that was a huge part of actually mm -hmm. my journey because that funded a lot of how I continued on. I traveled further on. I went to Bali, Indonesia. I went to Thailand. I was just like finding myself and mm -hmm. I completely quit um, smoking pot actually. And I noticed that it was so good for me. Like I was having dreams again. I was like being, I could think again. Mm -hmm. I was feeling motivated again and you know, nothing against it but it just was a, a time in my life where I needed to quit so quitting that was really huge for me and then let's see after that I tr tr fun started trickling down and I was like crap like mm -hmm. what do I do now you know and I just hadn't found a passion yet I was like clueless just like who am I still like what am I doing like traveling is great but I can't keep doing this forever mm -hmm. So I didn't want to go back to Asheville. I didn't want to start at square one. And I had a friend who was living out in Hawaii, on the big island of Hawaii. And she was just telling me how amazing it was. Like, girl, you got to get your butt out here. It's so good. There's so many opportunities. Like, you can make it, you know, just mm -hmm. buy a one-way ticket and come. So I was like, all right. I had enough money for a one-way ticket, $500 extra in my pocket, my backpack, and I came. Wow. <laughs> I found myself here. I was 21, 22, 21. Mm -hmm. And um, again, just like clueless. Just like, what, what the heck am I doing here? I'm here. Okay, let's figure it out. So, you know, I needed some funds. I got a job in town, this little tiny town called Bahoa at a pizzeria, slinging pizzas, you know, just doing, <laughs> doing what you gotta do. 
it was fun. I enjoyed it for, you know, the time being. But again, I was just like, this is not it. This is not what I need to do. Right. It's not <laughs> my passion. This is not what I'm doing for the rest of my life. No. I know this. I've got so much more inside of me that it wants to come out that I want to share with the world. And, uh, long story short, I was living with this woman nannying her daughter and me and her daughter were walking down the street in our neighborhood and we ran into this woman walking her dog and this woman who is just became my mentor like the inspiration of my life I would not be who I am without her Kiva Blackledge she was our next door neighbor it turns out and she had her own private jungle gym with like full on equipment I'm talking barbell dumbbells like treadmill um a climbing wall like mm. this place was so cool it, it was, was decked cool. out like so so cool um so she showed me the gym and it was like this like little spark like ignited inside of me I was mm. like oh my god can I work out here like will you train me because at that time I was like Working at the pizzeria, I was smoking tobacco. Like mm. I was still smoking tobacco. I was, I was not fit. Like I it was, it was not so fit. <laughs> I actually gained like, I mean, I think I was like one, almost one forty at that time, and I just felt so heavy in my body. I like wasn't happy, and I was like, oh my gosh, there's a gym next to my house. I have yeah. to go work out here. Yeah. And Kiva was like, yeah, I'll be your trainer. Like, so I started paying her and she started training me, I think twice a week. And let me tell you, she kicked my yeah. ass. I she bet. so hardcore, this woman. I it, just, wow, so much shout out to her because she's amazing. Um, and what, how, who's is she, um, is she older? Like she's, she's, oh my gosh, I don't want to get her age wrong. So I think she's 50 some two now. Yeah. I just wanted to mention that because I've met her and I've seen this jungle gym. And to me, like some people have this idea that if they're in their fifties, they can't be as fit as someone in their twenties. Oh no. But here we are with a 50 year old ish yeah. kicking a 20 ish ass. Today. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> kicking that. my butt. Mm -hmm. So I was like, if she can do it, I can do it. So that was like my motivation right there. Um, so yeah, working out with her changed my life. I wind up moving in with her onto okay. her property. Okay, so I left living with that other woman, nannying for her daughter. It just wasn't working out. I was like, can I move in with you? She's like, I've got an extra cabin. I was like, yes. That's awesome. So living on the property, mm -hmm. okay, waking up to a private jungle gym every day i started working out every single day yeah, i bet mm -hmm. i lost so much weight so fast i started gaining muscle like crazy i had never really um been into lifting weights before until mm -hmm. i met her and i loved it i was like this is so fun mm -hmm. like i've never felt so much power and strength in my life and i and i was just hooked so i continued with it and um I realized through through all of it that she changed my life like she changed how I felt like she she inspired me to feel and like take care of myself in a whole new way and I was like I could do this for other people mm -hmm. like I want to do this I want to help people feel like I'm feeling now I want to help them get out of their rut I want to help them feel strong I want to help them feel powerful I want to help them feel confident yes you know so that's where it started and I decided I was going to get my personal training certification through ACE. I'm going to shout out to them. They're a great, great company, um, American Council on Exercise. Mm, cool. It was a six month long program, hard as an F. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I studied my little tushy off day and night like for six months straight i was like i am not failing this test i want to know every single thing i read that giant textbook from front to back and it was so fun i mean the whole, i just had so much fun the That's whole time awesome. i was like this is the, like i love learning about the body mm -hmm. and how it works and nutrition and exercise and just everything that goes along with it so i had a really fun time 
learning all of that and then the time came I took my exam I passed it was like the best Yay. day of my life and I got my certification and because Kiba was like well if you want to do this you have to get certified and I was like okay so I got certified I got my certification mm -hmm. and she was like all right well now you can start working wow she hooked wow. me up with a couple clients I got one client who I still have today nice. I still train him today it's like you think he's 60 something awesome. um gosh it's been like I, I lost track of how old he is because he just he, age is just a number okay yeah, first of all so age true. is just a number you guys <laughs> um he's amazing he's come so far like I'm so proud of him so yeah I just I got clients I made friends for life I started helping people, inspiring people, and I loved it. I was like, this is it. I, I found what I want to do for the rest of my life. It's like, I couldn't believe it. I, like, sometimes to this day, I still have to pinch myself, like, is this real? Like, this That's is real. awesome. You know? You mentioned your mom, and I, um, because we're friends, know that she raised you on her own, and a lot of our listeners are unattached siren mamas. Mm -hmm. And so I was curious about, did she um, instill like some of this confidence within you um, at a young age? Or do you think that you solely found that from this experience or was it a combination? Like, what would you say to that? I definitely gained confidence from my mom, for sure. I mean, first of all, she is gorgeous, yeah, like, she is. <laughs> beautiful. And that's where you got. They look exactly the same. <laughs> so, you know, she's just this powerful, very confident woman who is amazing teacher, um, massage therapist. I won't get too much into her, but she's she's amazing. So she definitely gave me confidence growing up, um, and just pushed me to be my own person she never tried to mold me into something that she wanted me to be or um you know she wasn't like you have to go take piano lessons and do ballet mm -hmm. so you know she's just like you want to do drugs and go waste your life away okay fine you do that <laughs> and when you're done with that let me know you know yeah go I'll figure it out for yourself uh -huh. you know and 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 I kind of really respect that in a way because there's so many parents who are like, shelter, shelter, shelter. Yeah. Like, you can't do anything. Uh, and then it makes them want to rebel even yeah. more. Mm -hmm. So um, with her, it was almost like, hey, you want to smoke ganja? Like, well, then do it with me. Mm -hmm. um, that way I know you're safe mm -hmm. and I know where you are and we can do it together, you know? I love that. So that's kind of how I grew up and a completely different way than I'm sure a lot of people and but maybe some people can relate out there yeah, yeah. um I think it sounds like she taught you by um example and by just allowing yes it's a really beautiful yeah, way yeah. and I just I, I was she's my best friend like best friend all the way like I feel so comfortable telling her anything I mm -hmm. was always so open with her I made sure you know like she knew where I was at all times. Like, if I was going to go out to a party, I was like, hey, mom, I'm going out to a party tonight at so-and-so's house. This is the address, you I know? like, that. Yeah. I wasn't afraid to, like, tell her, you know? Or, like, I wasn't afraid to, like, come home, like, drunk or whatever. Like, I need your help, mom. Like, come get me. I like, I, I could always count on her. I really hope that Aluna and I have it's that. So <laughs> She's it's so important. It's so important because you guys... It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Like, your kid's going to grow up. They're going to be curious. They're going to want to mm -hmm. do things. And you can't shelter them forever. You can't. I think knowing you is a really great, like, for me, a good feeling. Because it's like, as parents, like, we get scared of stuff like that. But then when you see, like, how you turned out. Well, let me let me put it out there that, like, it wasn't like she was like, go waste your life away. No, she, she was definitely like, this is really stupid of you like I hope you can see what you're doing and all these mistakes that you're making but she was so disappointed in yeah. me and like that disappointment hurt like cut like a knife so mm. deep and I was like crap like I can't make my mom disappointed I want to make her proud yeah you know that's so much more effective than like anger yeah, yeah mm -hmm. totally like she she didn't really discipline me that much like she didn't like ground me mm -hmm. or like take things away she was just like I'm so disappointed in you and I hope you can see the mistakes you're making and I hope that you don't do them again. Mm -hmm. 
but this is your life and I'm not going to control it. And I hope you can figure it out for yourself. I love that. So I grew up really mm-hmm. fast. Mm-hmm. I had a job since I was 15, making my own money. I was very independent. Um, there was lots of times where my mom went out of town for work. So I had the house to myself and I just, I took care of myself. I learned mm-hmm. how to cook my own food and do my thing, you know? Mm-hmm. So... I think that has a lot to do with how you are now. I you had the strength to move to Hawaii on a one-way ticket yeah. and to be like, okay, like I just ran into this athletic instructor on the street and now she's my mentor. Like you have that in you to kind of like follow your own heart and yeah. your own way. I yeah. love that. So you're, let's, let me think about this story. You're, you started working out every day. You're living at the jungle gym, which I'm so glad I got to see and we're talking about it in past tense. Can you um, share a little bit about why? I can. So 2018, um, for those of you who are not familiar with the big island, we live on an active volcano and there was an eruption. The lava came pouring out of the ground and within a week, Kiba's property and thousands along with other thousands of homes were taken and her whole life of like 15 years building her dream and everything was gone i'm talking gone not like a fire came through and you can like rebuild like gone Nothing. yeah like the lava you can't even access the property because i'm pretty sure fissure 22 mm-hmm. happened on her property wow so wow. yeah so where Fissure 8 was, that's where my daughter was born. Wow. And I think that um, the reason I wanted you to bring that up is because we live in Hawaii. And, and when I was growing up, I always thought only billionaires go to Hawaii. You know, like never. People ask me all the time, they're like, <laughs> how do you afford it out there? Yeah. Like, how, how are you living out there? Isn't yeah. it so expensive? Right. Like, it's all about how you live. It people. is. It is. And there's some people who just feel called to this island and I feel like you and I are definitely a couple of those people Mm -hmm. and there's something about living here that's a constant reminder of the um of evolution of destruction of creation and how they're like one in the same Mm -hmm. and I feel like 2020 has a lot to do with transformation I'm just seeing that everywhere people are like ready to step into who they are and (laughs) <laughs> that only happens when there's a massive destruction of something. Mm. And something that you say in your workout classes that I love is um, <laughs> you say, without challenge, there's no change. Or how do yeah, you say Yeah, like if it? it doesn't challenge you, it's it not going to change, change you. you. Yes, if it doesn't challenge you, it's not going to change you. And what a challenge that was for your mentor to lose her property of 15 years. Mm-hmm. All of the people of our communities that we saw lose their homes um, and then these like specific places like Fissure 8 and Fissure 22 were like something that was really important to a lot of people that happened to be the exact same location of these fissures. Mm. Over a hundred, I don't know, I mean, maybe it's hundreds of babies were born where mm-hmm. my daughter was born. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> my, I just like want to cry every time I think about it because my midwife would say, oh, Pele like, came here to give birth, you know, because mm. it was the birthing house. And it was like... There's not a coincidence that like all that energy cultivated right there where the fissures were. There was lava under your feet the whole time. It was there a was hot fire, <laughs> passion, drive. It was intense. Mm-hmm. Like I- I'm gonna roll the windows down because we're like hot boxing hot in here. Steamy. Hot. <laughs> 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 oh, steamy. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, like the power on that property was just you couldn't deny it it's it was so strong Mm -hmm. and it definitely took me through a loophole though too because I went from one extreme to the other I went from smoking tobacco and just like not taking care of myself to like taking care of myself to the extreme where I wouldn't eat anything unhealthy like only healthy foods I pretty much took carbs out of my diet like I wouldn't eat carbs and I didn't eat a lot of meat. I was basically starving my body. Mm -hmm. And what was happening is like, I lost so much weight, but then it like, I couldn't lose anymore. It was like Mm -hmm. holding on to the rest of this fat that like wouldn't, I couldn't let go of because I was like restricting myself so much. 
and basically went through an eating disorder, which I call orthorexia. Um, it's where you are afraid to eat anything but like healthy food. Like you're like, it's like a fat phobia. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, one extreme to the other, for sure. I was like exercising every single day. Like I didn't take any rests or breaks and my body was constantly sore. Um, it wasn't good. I just, it wasn't healthy. So I, actually the person who helped change my life was my partner who I'm with mm. now. He came in and was like, what are you doing? You need to eat carbs, girl. Like mm -hmm. you're, well, you're killing out yourself, yeah. you know? So he really helped change my life and opened my eyes and helped me have a really healthy relationship around food. I... How Started do you think he was able to do that? Because he loves food so uh -huh. much. <laughs> <laughs> and he eats like a bottomless pit. And uh -huh. like, I would just like watch him eat. Like he eats so much rice and now he eats so much rice too. Oh, and I wow. love it. Like uh -huh. rice is one of my staples. Yeah. Um, and I would just like watch him eat all this food and be like, oh my God, I'm so hungry. <laughs> oh, that looks delicious. <laughs> so, yeah. I, uh, that's great so again kind of just by example yeah you were yeah, able yeah. To see but I just different. was able to find a healthy balance mm. with things I was really able to I, I like to say either a 70 30 or 80 20 is kind of where my my diet's at like 80 percent of the time 70 percent of the time I'm eating healthy the rest of the time I'm just like I don't care I'm gonna eat it like <laughs> not obviously mcdonald's or mm -hmm. like really really processed foods because i just that just makes me sick yeah like, i can't even eat it or i'll just i feel really sick but like a cookie or like you know my cheat food it just mm -hmm. probably cookies and sweet things i really like yeah so. me too. <laughs> I love sweets. and it's okay mm -hmm. like i i it's come so far in my journey you where have. i'm just i feel so i like have such a good balance um with my exercise routine, I teaching my classes, which I want to get into, yes. like, talking about that. Um, was there like a, a question about yeah. the classes? Like, how did I get into teaching yeah, classes? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Good. Well done. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, how did you get from um, your your one on one clients to where did you decide? Okay, I'm ready to lead groups because I feel like it's a lot easier as far as like confidence wise to teach one person once you get in front of a big group it, it, it challenges your your confidence it was such yeah a big challenge yeah i was terrified the first time i taught a class um which was at the warm ponds by the way oh, another place that doesn't exist gone. from the lava flow um that's where luna learned to swim yeah. yeah so at the warm ponds i think it was about five or six uh women who came to the class and that was like a big number like yeah. for your first time yeah. I was like really nervous I had no idea what I was doing but I knew that I needed more community like mm. I knew I knew that the one-on-ones were great but I wasn't reaching the number of people I wanted to reach yes and there was nothing like it here like nope. in Pahoa there's no group fitness classes so nope. I was like well I guess I'm gonna be the first yep. like let's do this and that first class was total validation. I was like, it went great. Like everybody loved it. And from that day on, it just became a thing. And you've been so consistent. This is something that I really admire about you because it's easy for people to get like a wild hair and like get hot and excited about for a minute. But it's, you don't, people will not see success unless they stick with it. Yeah. And I've seen you stick with it through the flow, through traveling, through um, you always cover your classes when you're gone and you don't just cover them like half-assed. You cover them with some, someone really awesome <laughs> and give your students an awesome experience of a different sort of class. Yeah. And um, something else I really admire about you is that we're all on this, all of her students are on this Facebook messenger thread. And like, sometimes like I get busy, I forget there's class and then I'll look at my phone and be like, oh yeah, this guy's teaching tomorrow. I should go to there. Like you're always reminding everybody and you're always like encouraging little shout outs. And I do my best. <laughs> you hold your community in a really sweet container. And I find that to be really admirable because you're not just a fitness instructor, you're a leader. Mm. You're, 
you're leading by example, just like your mom. Mm. You're um, sharing your life, your experiences. I mean, we just took class, by the way. That's why we're all sweaty. Um, <laughs> so <my> yes. <laughs> and you'll say like, oh, like I got to remind myself to engage my core. And I love how you share those things because it's really easy for people like in the group to look at the teacher and put them on a pedestal and say, oh, you know, they don't mess up or they're better than me or they're so much more fit. Um, but when we do that, we're separating ourselves mm. from each other and everybody and nobody is special. Like you have just found some that you're calling mm. and your purpose and that's, you're sharing that and it's inspiring people around you. It's like, you know, when someone holds up a lantern, everybody around them can see the light and that's what you're doing. And I, um, I like, I really believe that people don't build confidence just from thinking about it, you build it from being scared, doing the scary thing anyways, and then looking back and be like, huh, I did that. Mm -hmm. I have a little more confidence. What can I do now with this much confidence? And it's hard and to do on. it on your own. Like mm -hmm. it really is. It's, it's almost impossible. You have to have a support system. Yeah. Maybe. And you had your mentor who like took you under her wing. Mm -hmm. I had a mentor um, from being a yoga teacher and I know I would not be doing anything that I'm doing now yeah. if it wasn't for her because yeah. she saw me. I saw myself as like a broken little winged yeah. thing, you know, and she was like, no, nah, you're going to spread those wings. Yeah. You're going to fly. Yeah. And that's the beauty of like that trickle down effect. It's like, um, by what was your mentor's name? Kiba. Kiba by Kiba stepping into her power you felt inspired to step into yours. Now you're inspiring people to step into theirs. Yeah. And anybody who hears this episode is going to be touched and be like, well, if she was able to do that, why not me? Yeah. And that kind of ties back into like, I, I want to go back to where I was working at the pizzeria mm -hmm. and um, I was so comfortable is the word. Um, getting my weekly paycheck, I was safe i felt safe like oh i've got this weekly paycheck you know i can pay the bills you i'm okay you know uh -huh. and in my mind i was like there's no way i could quit this job and like make my own money and like be able to support myself wow. how is that possible mm -hmm. like what i was doubting myself so much and kiba again was just like you got this like i'm doing it you can do it too you know so I took that leap of faith. Like I literally jumped off the cliff, you guys. It was so terrifying. I quit my job and I just went head first. I was like, I, I took it upon myself to get the clients and to start the group classes. And it wasn't easy at first. I definitely wasn't making as much money as I was, you know, with my weekly paycheck. But it started to work itself out and this is a quote from my dad i want to just shout out to him he's also an amazing guy in my life um he says do what you love and money will follow mm, i love that That's and true. both of my parents like they do what they love mm. and work for themselves so i think that's also like a really huge um, yeah. inspiration to me and example that i was like it they can do it i can do it too i love that it's so true too yeah i love that so um a lot of people um i've seen work out as kind of like a form of punishment mm. like they ate that cake and so they're gonna go you know punish themselves and and work out mm. and um I know, like, I mean, I know you've listened to the podcast, so you know, like, my journey with, like, working out for guys or working mm. out so someone would, like, ask me out or think I was attractive. And, um, you know, that was, like, taking poison every day. You know, it was so um, yeah. hurtful to my heart and to my soul. And um, it was through yoga that I learned to move my body in a way that's self-loving and that... Um, I like never feel in your class anything except for like a huge um, feeling of uh, collective self-love. Mm. It's like really not about punishing yourself and it's about um, having fun. Having fun. We always laugh. We always have fun <laughs> and, and caring about your, your, your temple, your, like the home for your soul in a way that is um, sustainable 
because it's not like, I mean, sometimes we can and we're like, oh my God, you're kicking my ass. But it's like, actually, really, I'm getting a lot of energy. I'm feeling strong. I feel like I'm sleeping better. Like, um, these are all things that help us live a better life and help us look better and feel, feel better and really show up. Yeah. So like, how do how are you able to create that environment of, of self-love workout for your students? And how would you advise somebody who perhaps is just somewhere out there in the world that is, is punishing themselves as they work out? Yeah. Um, well, there's a word for it. Um, intrinsic and extrinsic mm. motivations. So extrinsic is like when you're doing it for the looks, when you're doing it to get that six pack abs and big booty and you know, you're just working so hard because you want this image of yourself. So that's the extrinsic. So my advice to you is to steer away from that. Like that will come with the exercise. Like you will start to see changes in yourself and your body physically, um, appearance wise try to go more intrinsic and do it for how you feel do it for the feelings that you get afterwards it might not be great during i'm not gonna lie to you like it can be really challenging and hard and you're like this sucks but just keep going don't give up and look for that feeling that you feel afterwards because it's gonna happen i'm gonna tell you right now it happens like no doubt about it. You're going to feel the adrenaline. You're going to feel the the power and the strength that you gain by doing it. Um, and that's what you want to look for. You want to look for the feeling. Do it for how you feel. Yes. Yeah. And that's, that's something I had through my own journey. Um, when I was telling you, I was going through that really unhealthy time um starving myself and just exercising so so much that I, I was in that extrinsic mindset where I was like I want to look a certain way like I can't be a personal trainer if I don't look mm -hmm. like a personal trainer you know mm -hmm. so I was like I need to have the big muscles and the six-pack abs Bullshit. no mm -hmm. you don't you don't you can be strong without those things um you can be fit without those things and I started doing it for how I felt and yoga is also another like huge part that like saved me it's like I started to slow down and really um just honor and nourish and nurture my body not mm -hmm. torture and punish it you know yes I really love the long stretches that you do after workout <laughs> Always like and during finally, sometimes you do. Too, yeah, yeah, I love that. That pigeon on the bench was awesome. Yeah, I yeah. loved that. That was after some crazy. Yeah, I don't know what you call those workout we were doing. Was that um, mountain climbers on the, the bench? On the bench. Yeah. I love incorporating. Mm -hmm. um, so my class, just to give you a little brief on it, I call it body weight burn. It's no no equipment, no excuses. You guys, I love that. You can do this workout anywhere, anytime. You can do it when you're at the park with your mm -hmm. kids. I love when you say that um, stuff. Like if you're sitting there watching, watching your TV. kid or watching <laughs> TV or find a park bench, find, you know, a chair. Like there's a million bajillion exercises that you can do with your body weight. And that's what I want to inspire people to do. Like you don't have to have equipment. You don't have to have a fancy gym. You can do this at home. You can do this in the park. You can do it outside. You can do it anywhere. I would love to have a YouTube video of us doing like oh gosh, workout that's my dream. combos. That's yeah, my dream. Be fun, right? <laughs> my partner keeps really telling fun. me, he's like, you gotta start doing exercise videos outside. You live in Hawaii. Yeah. Like, go to the beach and film yourself doing an, a, a workout routine. Yeah, so, I love that. Some goals for 2020. Yeah, right there. absolutely. It's so cool. <laughs> I mean, I, I recently made a five video yoga series that people get when they sign up on my email. And I have, people have been asking me to do that for 11 years, wow. 11 years. I couldn't believe it took me that long. Cause I was like, oh, it doesn't look right. Or I'd film it and it, it doesn't matter yeah, how long it, it took. Does, yeah. You did it. Yeah, exactly. And it's just funny. Like now it's out there and it feels so good yes. when somebody's like, oh, but I live in Montana. I'd love to take your yoga class. I'm like, oh, it's right there. Five videos for free. Like 
I gotta in your watch home. them. I yeah. haven't watched them yet. I'm going well, to do them. Don't just watch them. I'm going to watch them. I'm going to do them. I swear, I'm going to do them. <laughs> yeah. I need more yoga in my life. I really do. It's, Everybody needs more yoga. I agree. <laughs> I really do. I really do. And it's like, um, it's for me, it was my like, my wake up moment, you know, to be like, oh my God, like I used to just have so much self-loathing and it taught me how to love myself like one piece at a time. And I feel like your story is really similar to that. And you've got like kind of like out of your head and into your body. And then it's like from there, we're like in to go deeper into our spirit, you know, mm -hmm. which your name's Sky Spirit. So it's so <laughs> perfect. And I, I just, I really love the way that you are leading by example. I love the way that you're like open to trying new things and like, and, and that you have something on the horizon, you know, that you're always like, okay, I accomplished this. Now what? Now what? Now mm -hmm. what? And you keep going like that. Like you're unstoppable. Mm -hmm. I, one of my first mentors, like, and she doesn't even know it, but to this day, I still like, I'm so inspired by her is Jane Fonda. Oh yeah. When she I was a little kid like four or five years old, I had my own little red leg warmers and my leotard yes. and my tights and my headband. And my mom and I would do Jane Fonda yes. every morning. Yeah. Oh my gosh. She just gave me the best idea ever. I really? Want... <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I want to do like a, a, um, a special class. The Call 80s? it like funky fitness, <laughs> funky fitness, have like a really funky, like eighties playlist and have everybody Fun. dress up in like their best, like eighties workout outfit. Oh my gosh. What I is that? I love song? that. That sounds, sounds very fun. <laughs> and what's that one Olivia Newton-John song? You gotta play that one. Let's get physical, physical. Yes. <laughs> That's so oh, good. No. Okay, I gotta write, I gotta yeah. like write that down later. Luckily make sure it's recorded. I yeah. <laughs> Your idea is recorded. That's such a cute like yeah. time that like that's when like that's my like childhood was when um, working out was started really getting celebrated. Mm. You know, I, my my grandma was saying to me something about when the first gym opened in our hometown in Madera, California. She was like, everyone was like, "What the hell are you gonna do in a gym?" Like. That wasn't a thing to work out. That wasn't that. You go, to, you go on the machines that like vibrate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so like now it's the culture's changed in such a short period of time yeah. where we're, you know, working out is like a normal thing. Yeah. And that yet there's still so many people who don't do it. Yeah. So I'm just like props to you for having the confidence to be brave enough to put yourself out there. Thank you for like reminding us of that. Like you, if you don't get out of your comfort zone of the pizza parlor and the steady paycheck, then you're not going to see results. You're not going to change. You're not going to have a new life. You're not going to be happy at your happiest because you're sitting in the stuck comfort zone, mm -hmm. but change and happiness and inspiration comes in the growth zone. Mm -hmm. When you're out of that scared, but doing it anyways, you're, that means you're being brave and you did that. And like every week, multiple times a week now you are out there inspiring people to do the same so i really appreciate you being on the show i like know that like someone out there is going to be like wow i can do that too and that is means everything i'll be 25 this month guys my birthday is on the 18th oh my god yeah that means you're a cancer capricorn capricorn wow it makes a lot of sense right? it does <laughs> it's all coming together <laughs> When you were telling me that about the extremes, I was like, hmm, what's her sign? <laughs> I, I tend to be an extreme person, too. And like, yeah. oh, there's a middle ground. And what's beautiful about the middle ground is that it's more sustainable. Oh, it is. And I'm so glad I found it. Feels good to be where I am right now. Really. I can take those rest days and do nothing. Like, it's mm -hmm. fine. I love that. Those are important, too. You know? Balance. Yep. Yeah. Sky... You are amazing. Anybody who wants to find Sky, don't you worry because all of her links will be in the show notes. And she has an awesome Instagram page that is very inspiring and apparently soon a YouTube channel. Yes, yes, it's <laughs> yes. coming. It's coming. It's very soon. <laughs> and um, 
I just really appreciate you being here and taking the time to share your story. But more, more than that, I appreciate you just being you and putting yourself out there and having the confidence to do that because you definitely helped me be healthier. Mm. And um, I love that the community that you're building and that like everyone can bring their kids and like, they're seeing people being healthy and prioritize movement. And, and uh, tell me what you said again. I love your... Um, no excuses, no equipment, no, no excuses. excuses. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. There's no need. You don't need a certain amount of money. You don't need a certain amount of things. You got a body, move it. Yeah. Yes. It's so good. Yes. Thank you so much. So you can find my classes um, twice a week at the Pahoa Rec Center. This is for you guys living here on the Big Island if you're or interested. Or if you're just traveling. Yes. And um, you want to get your workout on while you're I'll traveling. I'll have some videos for you guys who are traveling soon, I promise. Yeah. But yes, here at the Rec Center in Pahoa uh, every Monday and Wednesday at 830 and I will be starting uh, another class in Hilo at Yoga Centered every Thursday at 8. It's a great location. Again, too. you'll find all the information yeah. on my Instagram, Facebook page, all that stuff. Yay. Don't you want to work out? Yeah, we just totally worked out. Healthy. I feel like we should go work out again. It's so good. <laughs> it's the, I love doing it in the morning. Like, it's the best way to start the day. It, it is. really is. Like, you if, know if, it's you're, done. if you're having a hard time, like, motivating yourself to, like, start, try to start in the morning. Like, get your mm -hmm. butt up and do it first thing in the morning because then... And, and I tell this to people too, like an hour out of your day is like, what, like 5%, 10% yes, of your small. day? Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. You're it done. Massive results. Yeah. I know yesterday I was like, I'm going to work out after this, after this, after this. And I kept putting it off. And then I was starving because it was like 1.30. And I was like, I got to eat now. Now I can't work out. You know, it just creates yeah. a, a cycle. So you got to just do it right when you do wake it. up. It's so true. And it doesn't have to be an hour. It doesn't have to be 30 minutes. It could be 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Like start small, you guys. Start small. After I gave birth to Luna, that's what I did. I, I committed to 12 minutes a day. Mm, that's I great. Had the, I, oh, girl, you'll laugh at this because <laughs> I got the DVD at the dump. Oh my gosh, yeah. The transfer center, um, Denise Austin. Do you Never know her? Heard of her? Okay. I didn't either, but there was two discs ridiculous. for her. So I bought them, and it, her thing is 12 minutes a day, 12 moves, 12 minutes a day. So every minute you do a different move for 12 minutes. And with, I gained so much weight after um, having Luna mm. and she also was such a needy baby. I had to hold her all the time. So 12 minutes was like all I really had, mm. you know, and she'd like be fussing for half of it. And I'm like, hurry, 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 get through my 12 minutes, you know, and now I'm up to an hour a day. So it's just yeah. like, she's almost four. It took time, but yeah, yeah, totally. it's, <laughs> it's doable. okay. Yeah. It's I lost doable. the weight. I feel great. And I have energy, and I can almost keep up with your class. Almost. You're doing great, girl. You look good out there. <laughs> I, I'm watching you. I love it. It's so <laughs> fun. Okay, well, <laughs> aloha. Aloha. Thank you so much, Sarah. This has been awesome. I, I hope to you. do it again. Love oh, you yeah. Too. You'll be back for sure. <laughs> I, got more, I got more plans for you. I love you. Bye. Mwah.